Hello, welcome to the Jan Arden Podcast. I am so happy to be here today. I'm in a great mood. I've worked out and uh, I'm with my two favorite women on the planet, Sarah Burke, <laughs> Caitlin Green. Caitlin, just quickly before we start, I know you guys are in Toronto. I'm in Springbank, Alberta. People are always asking me where we are. Mm -hmm. So I think on the top of every show, I'm going to keep saying where we are because people want to know. Um, Caitlin, you have a little guy and uh, our little Will is... You called him a Pucano this morning. Yeah. So what? Yeah. What? What's the update on parenting, and um, and basically a lot of poo? That's the world I've been living in. My condo looked like Dexter's condo yesterday because oh. I had just covered everything in garbage bags in an effort to clean, like expedite cleaning. Everything is being boiled. I don't have any skin left on my hands because I've been oh, using so much God. Clorox and Lysol. He just contracted this bizarre GI bug that's going around. And really, anyone with a child in daycare in 2024 knows that the viruses are virusing. They are just stronger than ever. And so you typically get, I would say, two to three weeks of healthiness. And then you just wonder what the virus is going to be. You hope that it's not hand, foot, and mouth, which we recently experienced because that is a doozy. That's a whole week of your life. Uh, but this one, I thought everyone's like, oh, the stomach stuff is fast. Like it's gross, but it's fast moving. But he started getting it on, he started getting a little sick Sunday, then Monday wasn't great. So he was home with us Monday, Tuesday. My husband leaves first thing this morning to go to New York. And then sure enough, of course the day does. that I'm solo, I get a text from the daycare saying uh, he had diarrhea at daycare. Oh, well, so I, yeah. you know, any of you parents out there that are going through all this stuff, if you've got kids in school and if you've got kids oh. in daycare, you are dealing with. I mean, it, it's scary. It's, it's almost biblical. like you want to have a, 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 a booth in your house where they, they get sprayed down before they yes. come back into your abode. They have UV I was going to call now. it decriminalization booth, decriminalization. but that's not Sanitization. the word that I was... De-virusication? De well, you need something. I... I I want one of those really like medical grade UV cleaning lights yeah. that they have in hospitals that just, it's like a Roomba that can just mm -hmm. go around and UV sanitize everything. They have boxes now that you plug in and I see all these mommy bloggers posting about them and they just shove everything in them at the end of the day. And then they set it to like <laughs> phase 11 or whatever it is. And then that they're off to the races and it's sanitized. So I don't Listen. know. I, but the thing is, you know, I, I'm told it's normal. I'm told by all the moms that this is just them building He's up building their up immune his system. immunities. Yeah. But I want to know from other people, like, is it worse now? Because I have friends who Can you let had... us know? Can you send us notes and let us know if there's anyone out there that has any um, tips for spraying down your child or decontamination booth? That's yeah, what I was looking one, for, not decriminalization. <laughs> um yeah, it's tough. But anyway, moving on to something that wasn't actually a poo show this year, the Oscars. Mm -hmm. And we would be remiss not to talk about them. This is the first time in probably, oh gosh, the last five, six years that I've watched the whole thing. I started, mm -hmm. I think I'm just going to see Jimmy Kimmel's opening because he's so great. And then half an hour went by and I'm still there and I'm still engaged and I'm loving, you know, how they have the five actresses coming out and saying a few words about each of the nominees. I'm like, A, how wonderful was it to see Sally Field and and uh, just, just Charlize Theron, like just everybody. It was like, ah, so thoughts. I loved the show and I just thought we've turned a corner. Nobody got punched. Mm -hmm. Nobody got slapped. <laughs> Will Smith stole everybody's joy last year. Everybody's joy. The joy was sucked out of the room. It never, that show never recovered. Was that last was year? Was that last year or the year before? The year before. Two been. years. Yeah. The year before. Yeah. But still, it the, the, the residue of that kind of behavior, mm -hmm. I think, was still... Oh, yeah. Anyway, what did you think? I loved it. I loved mm -hmm. it just like you. I thought that it was a really strong celebration of movies and the love of movies. I felt like the vibes were really, really good. They started the show an hour earlier this year, which is a move love that was long over. Exactly. Because now people actually watched the whole show. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it just it really seemed as though a lot of the films that were nominated this year were 
excellent. Uh, you had no shortage of fantastic filmmaking and, you know, seeing someone like Christopher Nolan get an award and, and I loved Oppenheimer. Um, but obviously you love, we've loved him for such a long time. I thought that was exciting. I loved Emma Stone's speech. And again, like you said, Jan, the, the handing of the nominations, like the mentioning of all of them felt very inclusive. Respectful. It, yeah. It made Caring, it feel like it, nurturing, lifting everybody else up, cheering people on. It it seemed like even if you didn't win, yeah, you know, at the even even if you didn't win, you just still felt recognized, appreciated mm -hmm. for the work you've done, and that's really cool. I love. And it. you know, the one person though who didn't do that, <laughs> uh -oh. God love him, Al Pacino. <laughs> I just, you know, you do, don't bring grandpa up for the last award of the night. This is what happened with La La Land and Moonlight. You shouldn't give it to someone who's a little bit confused. And that's fine. He can be a bit confused, but just not for best picture. But not he at doesn't the end think of the he's confused. He didn't read any of the other nominees. Like everyone else, like he didn't read any other nominees. He was just like, am I see Oppenheimer? And I was like, uh, well, is that the announcement? Are we, or do what we know? I, I thought the gist was throughout the three hour ceremony, they were, mm. they were featuring every Oscar nominated best picture. Um, yeah. And I thought that they, so maybe they thought that was way too much for him to navigate you know, old Al getting up there and, and saying, you know, listing off 10 films. Maybe that was a bit too much for him. Do they just want him to walk out and just read the damn cards? They've changed the cards now too so much. They don't even put the other nominees on the cards. It's just the name of the damn winner, period. I think on the teleprompter, he was to read the, the nominees. Because even though they each get their own little vignette peppered in throughout the show, you want the summation of all of it for that category. Because not everyone is going to pick up on the fact that you saw a clip from, you know, Zone of Interest. And that therefore means it's nominated for Best Picture. Like, I, I think it was just sort of that's peppered in throughout the whole show. But he should have said what was nominated and it was, <laughs> it was a confusing delivery. So I just thought, you know, or, or give them someone else. Like I thought like Danny DeVito and, and, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger did such a fun job together and you know, like, oh my gosh, uh, um, Emma, why am I forgetting her name? Emma now? Stone? Emily, no, Emily Blunt and Ryan oh, Gosling. They had such Funny. great chemistry, you know, so the two person vibe was great. So I thought like, why have him come out alone and then sort of be confused oh. about the whole thing? I think he needed like a counterpart to sort of keep him on did track. Did you see the shot? They had a very interesting directorial choice in what camera to use when he came mm -hmm. out on stage, it was mm -hmm. behind him. I thought the hunchback of Notre Dame was <laughs> crawling out on the stage. And I thought it was like an AI thing at first. I really yeah. did. I'm not kidding you here. It was, it was kind of in the shadows. It was silhouetted. And I'm thinking, oh, someone's really struggling. And then I'm like, oh, it's Al Pacino. Uncle and Al. there's nothing, I don't want <laughs> <Uncle> to, to <laughs> I don't want to vilify aging. I think no, of course it's not. It's hard enough in society. Men don't face it half as much as women do mm -hmm. because every woman there had been starving themselves for a month leading up to this ceremony and to fit into those dresses and to, mm -hmm. to, to pull that off. I don't think men give two shits. I think they get up, shave. They might have somebody help them with their hair, maybe a girlfriend or a wife, someone help them tie their tie and off they go. Mm -hmm. They don't Spritz face the scrutiny. Although um, Robert Downey Jr. had uh, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> he had bell bottoms on. He had yeah. He had a wide leg. On. It was a wide know. leg. I thought he did the best job of the wide leg suit trend. It was a full YSL suit, and he looked fantastic. Um, any other favorite moments? Speeches? Anybody? I have mine, but I actually wasn't cringing about people getting up and speaking. I, I, I was actually act waiting for, for what they had to say, which is nice. I really liked Cord Jefferson. He yes. was the director and the writer of American fiction. I thought he did a fantastic job. He, I believe, won for Best Adapted Screenplay. Mm -hmm. and uh, It was a book. He, it was based off of a book. Yeah, and he acknowledges just how hard it was for him to get this gig in the face of increasing focus and budgetary allocation for giant Marvel. Three hundred million dollar movies, agent. maybe. Yeah, yeah. It really All is this. important, and people were cheering. Yeah. Like to get yeah. these. There's so many people wanting to get projects made. Totally. 
I it's love, crazy. I just, I love his whole angle on that. And it really is important. Why are we doing one blockbuster? And do we even know it's a blockbuster? A lot of these things fail. I know. Um, that was his point. It's a risk. You have a $200 million budget. That's a risk. It could turn out to be Transformers Rise of the Beasts, although they just greenlit two more Transformers, even though they're not really making up their money. Well, I think the, the big thing for me, too, is I wish there was cameras going into some of these parties. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I, wish I, I, I wish we could see little clips of the conversations and the sidebar stuff going on. And it's so interesting. What is it with In-N-Out burgers? Like, am I missing something? Yeah, I'm, I'm vegan, and I'm sure In-N-Out Burger doesn't have a choice, but at every party and everyone that talks about after I win my award, me and my husband went through In-N-Out Burger, like Jamie Lee Curtis. I was out of there. I did my, my presentation, and we went through In-N-Out Burger, and we were home, and I was in my pajamas by 6 o'clock. Like, have you guys ever had In-N-Out Burger? I, no, have, yeah. I haven't. I, ha I, have. I have. It's so okay. good. It's, it's a bit of a tourist destination in the States, like, especially mm -hmm. if you're a Canadian and you're down there. It's like on the list of things. Why? It's, um, is it the buns? No. Yeah. Walk me through this. It's not anything crazy. Like, oh, it's kind of crazy because it's annihilating the planet. I mean, God only knows how many, you know, well, animals that part. have to that be part. killed to <laughs> supply that. No, there's that, that part of it. I mean, but I just, the audacity to me sometimes to be so like, like people are so kind of they may as well have been talking about McDonald's, right? Like it doesn't, you know, it could be anything. It it's more in and out because it's an LA thing. It's like a real LA. Yes. It's a West coast U S um, chain specifically. Yeah. And it's a pop culture thing to go do, but also predominantly this started because those celebrities are starving. There's no That's food why. at the award shows. <laughs> and so they all, and they haven't been eating leading up to this because they have to be on camera and in this dress and blah, blah, blah. So typically what happens is they're starving. Their blood sugar is probably plummeting. And so they get their driver to take them through the drive through of in and out or they go in like after Paul Giamatti won his golden globe he was photographed at an in and out burger like having a burger a lot of and people have been I I just am I'm curious as to why are the fries good like did you have the, the fries, fries are great you can it order is, them animal style good. it's delicious it's good but like it's nothing different from like a ton of burger chains here that's what I would say so it's a bit of a novelty in that sense but um yeah you, should we read the the was it a tweet or a thread from Simu Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I do. I'm, I'm very curious about it because at the Vanity Fair party, yeah. they had, you know, these beautiful, gorgeous waiters and waitresses, service mm -hmm. people walking around with platters, like think wimpy from the Popeye cartoon, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> eating so many hamburgers. I, I would salivate when I was a kid watching wimpy eating like a hundred <laughs> hamburgers. I thought this is the greatest thing. <laughs> anyway, they walked around and everybody had was eating in and out burgers at Vanity Fair in their gowns. So it wasn't fancy, but yeah, Reed Simu's, he, he tweeted about the food. Yeah. He, he did a little review. It's like rating. Yeah. He says rating the food options at the Oscars and after parties. So for Oscars, he gives it a three out of 10. Jimmy, I assume Jimmy Kimmel stashed some soft pretzel and sour patch kids <laughs> under our seats. It wasn't glamorous, but did its job. Um, gov, gov ball. So is that the governor's ball? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, 11 Gov's out balls. of 10. Everyone knows Gov's balls, Sarah. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. 11 out of 10. This was insane. Wood-fired pizzas, um, Wagyu sliders, pecking duck. I did nothing but inhale food the entire time. Vanity Fair, 7 of 10. Ah, the infamous party with the In-N-Out burgers on tap. Can't go wrong. Madonna, 9 out of 10. Full spread of curry, rice, naan, samosas. I was simply too full. <laughs> so. Ooh. Is that mean like at a Madonna concert or is there a no, party? No, I think it, I think he means the, the her the um her Oscars after party because like Elton John hosts. I don't know if he did one this year actually, but he used to do one. Um, and my dad actually went to one of his. Oh wow! Your and dad Flor went to an Elton John after Oscar party. He, the How? Elton John Oscar viewing party. So they the they hell? get together and a bunch of celebrities who aren't invited to the actual awards. Uh, and musicians and everything will attend and then they watch the awards together and it's all catered and it's this big fancy thing. And it's because a co-worker of his uh, is Peter Furnish's brother. Oh. Or, or was, like my dad's retired now. But so, um, and he, my dad worked You mean worked David in... Furnish? That's it. The, his brother's name is Peter. Ha <laughs> ha Okay, there we Peter. go. No, I was, I, yeah. I was getting confused. I'm like, holy shit, how many people is he married to? Yeah, and so um, anyway, so, and my dad, like, and again, my dad like has Super like fun. 
yeah, he's a super fun guy and he's, uh, he likes to have, a, he likes to party and he's from Prince of Rhode Island. So he's not from like a big city. He's worked in big cities and like great what jobs all his life. But so for him, he's like, Florence and the Machine is performing. I'm going to get up there and dance. I'm going for it. And he said, he turned around at one point. No one else was on the dance floor. He was just like at the front drunk going like, woo, Florence. But he's like all these button down celebs, like too cool yeah. for school were there. And he was like, how are you guys all not dancing to Florence and the Machine? I was like, you were the guy there from PEI. <laughs> well, what a, what a big night it is. And it was great to see Emma Stone win. I, oh, I love her. You know, Poor Things was by far and away, my favorite film, probably of the last three or four years. I like whimsical. I like over the top set design. I like a bizarre story. The storyline, I'm not going to give anything away. If you haven't seen it, go see it. I've seen most of the, um, the films this year. I really do try and make a concerted effort. And yeah, I'm the person spending $24.99 when they first appear on iTunes. I think, <laughs> you know, it's great renting them, but mm -hmm. I actually want to support the people that are making these films. And they, they yeah. really do say the cinema is dying. Other than Barbie, Dune was like, we spoke about this, you know, last week. Um, just it was the biggest box office draw really of the last year other than Barbie, Barbie and Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I love going to see the movies. I hope it's something that doesn't die out. Um, you know what I wonder about? And yes, I've been busy and like working on my business. So like there's part of that to the story. Well, thank you. Thank you. But like I don't have um, cable. And mm -hmm. so for me to watch something like the Oscars, it requires me to make plans with like whether it's my parents or a friend to go and watch. Because mm -hmm. You come with me next year, girls. We should, we should make a plan. The okay. three of us. This is my Are invitation. Are we going to L.A.? No, well, come here and we'll watch it in my movie room. Oh, that would be amazing. We'll, oh, we'll invite that. some of my farm friends over. Donna. Donna. Yes. <laughs> Sarah and I have a request for Donna to come. We'll have Donna come. Great. <laughs> then we're there. She acted we're in high way. school. Donna's the, the greatest. She right. just was texting me. Well, it's snowing right now. Just thought I'd point that out. It's actually snowing out my window. Anyway. <laughs> Oh. But but I wonder about like you know the the generation that doesn't have cable television yeah. and just pays for the few like subscriptions. They're watching a month. clips the next day, Sarah. Yes, mm -hmm. I did too. I did too. But they're they're going yeah. on. You're going to get the best of when you go on X or yeah. when you go on what mm -hmm. the hell ever. Yeah. You're going to see all the clothes you need to see. You're going to see. Yeah. You know the yeah. You don't need to. Okay. Anyway, while we're speaking of kind of celebrity news stuff, I would be remiss, and I was I I pushed back to Caitlin a little bit when she said, you know, the Kate Middleton photograph. And I said, oh God, I was, we were texting this morning and I said, I just find it all kind of sad. And she's like, it's the biggest story out there. Like we, <laughs> so I want to know your take on it. And I want to know from you, cause you're in, you're hip and in the know, I'm out sitting out here in the fucking trees. Why <laughs> has this been such a debacle for her, for the family, for the royal family, for everything. Oh, you know, Any update was, since last yeah. week? Like, I, think mostly, I think mostly it's the debacle because they have handled it so poorly. So I think it's, it's, it's noteworthy to say that from a family, an organization, a syndicate that <laughs> usually has this stuff pretty buttoned down. It's like, it's, like don't, it's like don't say anything, don't do anything, don't address it. So for them to, to make Kate this like fall person where they released this Photoshopped image of her with her kids and it was for Mother's Day in the UK. So it was recently Mother's Day in the UK and she sent, put this photo out, but it's pretty obvious that they weren't actually in this photo together. They had doctored the image. And so when people started catching all these flaws, Associated Press, all these other newspapers put out what's called um, a kill order. Like, don't run this ad now. We we have confirmation that it's been doctored, so we can't say that it's legit. Good luck that, keeping up with doctored photographs going forward, folks. Well, yeah, that's yeah, that was my point. I was like, guys, how did you not have a Good better luck. Photoshop person? Because there's been a million of them out there already. You just don't even know it. Well, so, okay, so then this one's been photoshopped. It's been doctored. And then after this gets caught by the, by the sleuths online... Instead of saying, oh, yeah, you know, we had an intern do it because Kate's still sick and we wanted to say something on Mother's Day as is usually protocol, whatever, they made it, Kate released, well, Kate, she wasn't actually her, but from the office of Kate Middleton, she releases a notice saying, <laughs> like many amateur photographers, I sometimes dabble in photo editing and I'm not the best at it. Do you believe it. that? Absolutely not. I was like, you guys all got together as the so royal family. So they're just family. making it worse. They are literally digging the hole deeper. 
they went with graphic design is my passion signed Kay Middleton. Like it just, it's so bizarre. <laughs> She's not doctoring her own photos. She had nothing to do with this. Who knows where she is. And then there've been other images that have come out. Now everyone has timelines on the last time she was seen with, with Prince William. Um, the Prince and her are no longer even sharing the same comms teams. Um, they are each releasing statements on their own letterhead separate from each other. I mean, there's trouble for these two. I, I personally believe that their marriage is not going to last. And, and that's very, very sad for, for the kids. Um, and I think that she was supposed to take part in a, a big annual thing they do called Trooping the Colors. And it happens on in June. And her name was quietly removed from that list. And when they photoshopped that f image, they removed the wedding band from her hand. Like, it's all very sketchy. Hmm. So I just hmm. wonder if They're maybe... They're setting a narrative. Hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's not being handled well. And it's, be and you know, this could all be shut down with a simple interview, pick an interviewer that you that you trust as the royal family, have her sit there and say, here's the surgery I had, it, it was it's taking a long time to recover. Well, let me Whatever. ask you this, why is it anybody's business? Why, why do just... we want to know so badly? Why would she have to sit down? It'd be like asking, I, I know the I position know. she's her, in, yeah. she's one of the most famous women in the world. Um, it's there's something to be said for anonymity. And I heard a really interesting uh, Jamie Oliver podcast a couple of days ago. And it was on a, a podcast that Kirsty Young, who normally is the host of Desert Island Discs, she's fantastic. She's got a new podcast called Forever Young, which is, you know, it's cute. And Jamie Oliver was on. And, you know, at first I'm like, do I want to listen to a guy talk about this? And it, his story was so amazing. But getting to my point and talking about Kate's fame and what baggage comes along, what, what heaviness comes along with that. He, she said, you know, would you do this all over again? You know, you were one of the most famous young people in the world for a long time. He was a sensation. His show at 23 year old, the naked chef was insanely popular, mm -hmm. but he said this and I wasn't ready for it. He said, oh, I would do everything completely different. He says, I think Jules and I would have bought the pub. He said that was the goal at first is to get our, enough money together to buy this pub, 60 meals a night, you know, 60 covers a night, and to have our kids and, and you know, to live close by. He said, giving up my anonymity, what people perceive fame to be, he said, is so awful. And he said, I don't want to sound like I'm not grateful. He said, I am. And I've tried to do good things with my money these last few years. He says, I've been bankrupt a number of times. He said, restaurants that have absolutely collapsed him. Jamie's Italian went, you know, tits up. I think uh, 15, uh, the restaurant he had employing really marginalized um, young people that would never have been hired by anybody. But I, it was interesting to hear him say that. So I feel for Kate. But that's that's my question to you is why should anybody, no matter how famous you are, have to sit down and explain themselves? It seems insane to me that the public deserves to know. So I think the public wouldn't deserve to know if they didn't pay 107 million pounds per year for this family to live their life. I think that if they weren't the largest land owning family monarchy in the world okay. that obtained all of their wealth and all of their geography by let's call it what it is, plundering other civilizations, they mm -hmm. would not have to be held accountable. If she was just a celebrity or another citizen, that's fine. But this is a well-documented history of oppression for lots of communities. Um, and there are a lot of complicated feelings around the royal family, the way they've treated Prince Harry, the way they treated Princess Diana. And so to now say, I don't like the way these rules are being played, you, you made the rules. You made the rules and you could stop accepting tax dollars from well, your own citizens. Well, she married into this family. She's She did. You, she you set it up. She knew exactly. You would basically call her a commoner. Yeah, right? but, but she's not. She's now the princess and her family knew exactly what this is all about. And they were really keen to have her in his circles. And she accepted all the stuff that came along with it as an adult woman. So I don't think that she needs to do this but do i think that if she wants the story to actually go away and if there really was nothing to see here you would just simply have an interview 100 percent. hop on zoom takes nothing but the fact that they aren't doing that tells me that where there's hop, smoke there's fire Kate, if you're listening <laughs> hop on zoom and you know what you can hop on with us do it 
You know what would be even better, Megan? <laughs> like to get Meghan Markle and like discuss what she thinks is going on. Oh like, my god, she would never. Out. She would never. And we they know, and they we were know. they were so tormented by the press, Meghan and Harry, for leaving. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. like this it, family because yeah. they are who they are. This is she what left, this- but she still wants to be referred to as the Duchess. Exactly. It's like so everyone can't what, have what, it. What's that it, bullshit? I mean, like they can't. No, oh, we're I not agree. part of this. But no, you will refer to me as a duchess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because people it, like it. I, I don't. They like. I it. have no opinion one way or the other. I do not know her, so I'm not one of those people that is going to throw that red flag onto the field and go, "I don't like her. She seems like a." <laughs> whenever people say she seems like a, I don't want them doing that to me. I would mm. never want anyone saying about me. Oh yeah, I saw her once at winners and she seemed like a real bitch like those kinds of statements are so they're just so weird and this blanket giant this giant blanket of negativity so i don't know her from anything i've seen her on tv but i I, that's probably mean for me to say her still insisting on being the duchess but when you leave it should be hey vegan how you doing yeah, you can't have it every which way. And that, that applies to the royal family too. You can't say we are going to do public appearances. We are going to be trotted around like public figures. We are going to be paid a, a, li- a far beyond living wage. We are not going to relinquish any of our land titles. Uh, but when we decide that there's mess happening, we don't want to talk about it. We are going to have a super problematic family member in the form of Prince Andrew. And we're not going to deal with this at oh, all. That's but so the wi- creepy. But the women, that. the women who marry into this family, are held to an entirely different standard and i mm-hmm. i feel protective kind of of kate middleton um because i i think that something not great is likely happening to her they have a history of the way that people who marry into this family can be treated or thrown under the bus or treated as problematic they become fall people for the behavior of the other members of the royal family who are the pri- clear priority and so that's what i think like that's what i'm noticing is i'm like i just want to know that she's okay like if she's just had yeah. surgery and she's feeling fine and that's that's what it is but it's like w- when you hear and you watch like the crown and see the type of stuff that that princess diana went through i, I you you worry like you worry for that person and for their yeah. mental health and well-being like i that's how elizabeth. i feel queen elizabeth would be turning in her lead and oh. gold covered massive <laughs> <laughs> sarcophagus in the bowels of Westminster Church or wherever she is. Mm-hmm. And yep. she could hardly turn around because there's so many jewels buried with her, but I still feel <laughs> sorry for the whole family. Okay, well, I think have we spoken to Kate Middleton, I think in all fairness. What yeah, what is I think so? So yeah. what is our let's summarize. The photograph was a major cluster of hell. Mm-hmm. And why couldn't they find an old goddamn picture? Come on, guys. A five-year-old could be running the publicity better than who's ever doing it over there. <laughs> Agree. They could have said, hey, Will, to your one and some a little few months old, in between your shits, can you just okay this picture for the newspapers? <laughs> He could, Jan, we, we in like Canva could have come up with like a better image like yes. than they did. It was, yes. it's bad. It's, they're not yeah. really even trying is how it feels. I yeah. would have drawn a picture on my app, on my iPad, mm-hmm. and it would have been a reasonable fax. I, they should have just gone with stick people. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you are listening to the Jan Arden podcast, by the way. I'm here with Caitlin Green and Sarah Burke, and we are on the Women in Media Podcast Network. If you're wondering, and you can get us everywhere, can't you girls? You can just, you can click on to, well, you can go to iHeart, you can go to Spotify, you can go to iTunes, you can go to probably, uh, where else do people do Everywhere, Amazon, everywhere. Everywhere. And everywhere. Thank, you, thank you to everyone who subscribed on YouTube mm-hmm. over the last week. Like the numbers are like climbing pretty stev- steadily and people are like, what? I can watch you guys for an hour? I know. <laughs> so, yeah. I know. So- I, and And I'm trying to look my best. Like half an hour ago, it was pretty sad. And I burned into the bathroom and I put makeup on. And then I'm babysitting my friend Nadine's little dog. So both these dogs assumed, oh my God, her routine has changed. She's changing it up. She came out of the gym. She's going to the makeup counter, which is weird because she hasn't showered yet. So we're going to go get into our bags and wait at the back door. Like stay low, stay low in the bag because that way she can't. And I'm like, you guys, I'm not going anywhere. I'm doing the podcast. I'm just trying to look good for, to, for Did the Did they world. go into their little bags? Yeah, because I freaking changed my routine and started putting leaving. mascara on. They're like, oh, <laughs> God, we got a change here. We got, she's, so she's thrown us a curveball. 
Yeah. All the feet going over to the bag, like wondering what's happening. Oh my gosh. It's the cutest. Yeah. So, it's so spring cute. has sprung. Although that I just mentioned that it is snowing here. It is. It's, it's, there's big fluffy flakes coming down. I'm sure it'll be very short lived, but I am, the excitement in my body is like palpable. When I ask, I'm not going to say Alexa's name loud because if I say it right now, she'll answer me. She's right over my shoulder. So when you know who, when I ask her and she tells me it's going to be plus six, I'm like, yes, it just feels tropical. I am chomping at the bit. Like I literally have to cool my damn jets because I want to go to Costco. I want to go to the superstore. I want to go start buying outdoor plants, but I can't. It still freezes to the end of May here. You can get freeze at night. You know, over the years, I've had 15 different kinds of plants sitting in my living room because I have to haul them all in at nighttime. <laughs> but it's so hard for me not to go buy stuff. Do you guys get excited about spring? Like I, uh -huh. if I could get I'm my power washer problem. out today, I, I would. Like I can't wait to power wash my garage. I can't wait to power wash everything. <laughs> power wash myself. <laughs> I do like that. I like spring cleaning and I, I, I definitely have a plant problem. Like that's like, a good problem to have. It's, it's good like for your I'll mental drop health. Two, I'll drop 250 bucks in one sitting and like come home with 14 plants. I don't have room. I love for. you. Like I, you can live here. I have so many plants. I have so many plants that two of them are growing into each other. The leaves. Oh, they're, they're not, friends. Yeah. It, it's crazy how they like each other like that. Like it's grown like up the bookshelf. Actually. Can you see right there? That's, yes. Yeah. Who wants to be alone? There's, in this There's world. Three, Nobody. three plants there and two of them have become one. I'll show you my giant <laughs> friend. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He's he's coming. <gasps> oh, he's yeah. a beauty. She's a yeah. beauty. He or she, I'm not sure. It's a giant, giant fiddle leaf fig because fiddle. the, the yeah. yeah, it's a good one. We've got a lot of plants too. We have, we have quite a few, but I love putting them on the balcony. So every yes. year we do all don't the pots on the trust balcony. trust people who don't have plants in their house. And a lot of people <laughs> will say, I travel so much. I can't have everyone. I have someone come and water my plants every 10 days. Like one yes. away. I don't have to do every week, but every mm -hmm. 10 days. Oh, plants. Don't trust people who don't like pets and children yeah. and plants. <laughs> Like I don't have children, I but I really love children. Yeah. I, I'm mad about children, but I know I don't have to wipe their asses. You don't have to clean up their poucano. It's yeah. uh, like, I get it. But so, we love yeah, spring, anyway. spring is, yes. it, I feel an, an actual physical transformation in my body. My body does something very similar to like hibernation in the winter. Mm -hmm. I change how I eat. I change my routines. I change yeah. what I do. Obviously I'm not going to be walking down the road when it's minus 15, minus mm -hmm. 25. But now I, I almost just feel like I'm waking up. I feel more social. Mm -hmm. I feel like reaching out to people more. Mm -hmm. I feel like making phone calls in the winter. A lot of times I'm like, do I want to call? Mm -mm. I don't even feel like texting. And it is yeah. kind of a blue zone for me. I'm not depressed, but I'm not my best self. I'm just not. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. And I think the socialization piece is so, so palpable because I'm getting the text. People want to make summer plans. Whose cottage are we going to go to? Planning trips, like all this excitement starts to pick up. And I also just love living in a country where we have seasons. I, I mean, I, 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 I know it would be great to have like, you know, warm weather year round and, and maybe one day that's what I'll desire more than the season change. But I love the change to spring. I mean, it is 17 degrees and sunny pretty well here in Toronto right now. Yeah. I'm going to New York this weekend. It's supposed to be 20 degrees and sunny on Friday. I cannot wait. Like I just to sit on a patio and feel the sun yeah. on your back. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it does something to, it just does something to you physically. Mm -hmm. There's nothing yeah. like even 15 minutes of sun on your face. Like my routine will change a lot as soon as it's warm enough First thing I do in the morning, I mean, I get my cup of tea and I go to my little balcony that is off of my dining room. Sarah's been to my place and it's where my tree house is strung across there. And I will sit there for, I'm going to say 75 minutes and I That's don't great. look at my phone. I don't do anything. I just sit and have tea and we did that the that dog morning. sits in my lap. Yeah. That's and cute. it's just part of my day and I just feel like, and I'm not doing anything. And then but I you start, are. then I start doing my stuff. Then I, that's get the mindful feeding. part of it, of yeah. everything we've been talking about, like setting up your morning to like, and I think cool things, feel good. Yes. I think creative things. And I think, yes. oh yeah, I should do that. And I'll think about old shows and I'll think about old friends. And it's a, 
a soft thoughtfulness. That's what I'll call it. And I think a lot of people, we're so, it's so jammed into our minds that we have to fill every moment of the day. And unless you're doing that, you're going to get left behind. You're going to get, people are going to pass you on that road and God forbid you should stop for a moment. And I wouldn't call it meditating because I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm doing that. Maybe I am in my own way, but I'm just going to leave it with soft mindfulness. But the things that I think are, there's no edges on them. It's not a panicked kind of thinking. It's not an urgent kind of thinking. It's not like, oh, I got to do that. Oh, I need to do that. Oh, I got to call that guy. It's so slow. It's like, hmm, oh God, wonder where that book is. I want to, I might read that again. Hmm. What are we going to talk on the podcast A piece of toast would be so great. (laughs) I think I'll have it with jam. No, you know what? I'm going to have that vegan cream cheese spread. Yeah, it's that kind of easy thought. So please, folks, take time to do that. Take time. You You don't have to have your phone in your hand. You don't have to be looking at anything. I even like morning reading. And I prefer that much more in the summer in the sunlight than I do in the winter. Anyway, spring... Ah, oh, I just, I'm so excited. Can't plant my garden until the middle of May. So that is a ways off. Uh, but I, it's still pretty. And daylight savings was last weekend. So oh. um, yeah. yeah, that's made Listen, such a thank God difference. we covered, we didn't cover that. <laughs> we covered Why? leap year. And I didn't even want to put that on the list this morning. I'm like, the girls will kill me. Let's talk about daylight savings and Why? <laughs> 4,000 no. years ago, Ju- Julius Caesar, I thought you guys would actually quit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, there's there's something beautiful about the idea of like at five o'clock being able to go for your walk and not worrying about it like getting dark. Like today, I don't get my bike back until later this afternoon. I took it in for a tune-up and it's going to be fine for me to go for a bike ride like after five. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah. Well, well I, I got was- confused and poor Will and I, we went out for a walk <laughs> And I was at the park and I got a text from Kyle being like, are you coming home? He has to like have a bath and go to bed. And I was like, oh, we got plenty of, and I was like, oh, it's 620. Jeez, we have to go home. <laughs> and it, but it was so beautiful out. And I just love that feeling. Yes. It just lets you know that that's you are. A, that's that soft. Yeah. That's that, that soft thoughtfulness. I mm-hmm. bet you guys are wandering along. How great is it, Caitlin, to not be so conscious of time? Oh yeah. To, to, to be looking at your watch every second of the day. I, most of the time, I don't know what time it is. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't live in the city. I'm not looking at a big clock. All my clocks are wrong anyway. Uh, they're, they're right we twice a year. We couldn't tell at all. My clocks are right <laughs> twice a year. I know. And you guys know that because once again, this morning I was like, what time do I do this? And I know it was on the thread somewhere. <laughs> but I went back and I'm like, I can't, I don't know where we discuss this. Dan, I know you're that Caitlin's 40. And I know... <laughs> I'm 37 now. Um, yep. Did I miss your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin and I were like, we're not going to bring this up. No. <laughs> no, no. I'm. St- yes, it was yesterday. It's fine. <laughs> was your birthday yesterday? It's fine. That's all we need to say. We oh, can move God. on. But yes, it's hilarious. What that- a Sarah, our Pisces queen. I'm the worst yes. <laughs> boss ever. You're fine. That's it's not true. all good. And it's she fine. she sent me a gift. She sent me this brand new microphone <laughs> and a stand. That was it's Sarah's well, gift happy, to herself. Sarah, it was. Happy it's going to help my editing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's all good. Wait, Jane, well, when's your birthday again? Remind us. Yeah, what's your birthday? It's coming soon. Two weeks? Yeah. 27th. Yeah, I have it right? Oh my God, I can't believe I remember that. And may that. I just say that my yes. dear friend, Teresa, mm-hmm. her son, Jake, and his wife, Jesse. Mm-hmm. They are expecting and, um, you know, there's a few little things that they're concerned about. Mm -hmm. So, and Caitlin can absolutely, you know, she's like, so they're not, they're just erasing any problems Mm -hmm. They're they've made a plan They're This is what they're going to do, but they're, they're, they've picked the day to have the C-section because the baby's Mm -hmm. a little bit turned around. Mm -hmm. And so it's on the 27th of March. Oh, (gasps) So it's on my birthday. And I was so thrilled. I and that. months, six months ago, I was I was like, when's your due date? She goes, it's April the bingity dong dong. And I'm like, oh, God, you're so close to my birthday. Wouldn't that be great if, you know, they were born on my birthday? Because I don't want to give away what flavor yeah. the baby is because <laughs> I, they flavor, might not have flavor. told people. Okay. They might have told people or whatever. It's a baby. It's not, whatever the baby <laughs> wants to be. It's a baby. 
Yeah. Right? Let's just be clear about that. Whatever this baby sweetie. wants to be, they can be. <laughs> so March the 27th. But I'm not going to forget this. So we are taping this today. It is the 13th. Your birthday is on March the 12th. And I fucking knew you were a March person. It's and fun. I was on set yesterday. I, I was, I'm not going to say what I was filming because... We're you know, I don't, wanna, I don't even know if people know that I'm on this show or in Ooh. this special, so I'm just not going to say anything. No. Anyway, it was very good, and and the people are called erpers. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> so whatever. Happy okay. happy birthday to oh, you. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dearest Sarah. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> I know it's late to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Well, that's what I would have done for you yesterday. <laughs> oh, it was so soulful. I loved it. Thank you. And I, I honestly am not like a crazy huge birthday person. I was like excited about like resting yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like my dad basically had to beg me to take me to dinner. I was like, I just want to. Where did you go rest. for dinner and what did you eat? Um, we had this delicious pasta with um, mm. mozzarella and uh, mushrooms and a butter wine mm. sauce. Did you have and a drink? What did you drink? Yes, it was called a Como. It had like grapefruit bitters in it and Aperol. Yum. It was like an Italian type cocktail. Um, and yeah, it was just that at a place around really the corner. That sounds really nice. It was nice and relaxing and I'm going to take myself to the spa for my birthday. Good for you. Yes. I love when a spa birthday. That's so nice. Oh my God. Yeah. And my friends are like, if you wait for me, I'm like, don't worry, I'll go again. Love a spa. <laughs> so you're Pisces, no. Jan is Aries. Here we okay. go. Okay. <laughs> No, I do like that. And I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm still reading. I'm getting more into this as I get older mm -hmm. signs uh -huh. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I, I am really starting to feel like there's something to this. There's just too many things for a while there. I was only like, I was looking at my dating history. Not that mm -hmm. anyone cares about this cause it's not very illustrious. I do. But pretty much <laughs> everybody that I had a lengthy relationship with, and there's been, let's say five major relationships in my 62 years. Mm -hmm. Um, all Virgo, all oh. Virgo. My wow. mother was a interesting. Virgo. I interesting. am not kidding you. When I started looking at that, so I'd be like, Oh, their birthday was, and I'm going, no, mm -hmm. no, I, it just, it started rising in me. I don't, th I think that's really fricking weird. Yeah. It's, I mean, you get, it's not uncommon to be drawn to the birth sign of one of your parents. So whether that is a good thing for you or a bad thing or whatever it means, but that's not entirely uncommon. So I found myself surrounded by cancers for so long. And I was like, what is like, this is just not working for me. Like this is not ro a romantic vibe. Friends who different. in the Uber, definitely a cancer. See, there you go. <laughs> So I was like, I got to get away from this. This is a, this is not working for me. And then I noticed that a lot of my closest friends, a lot of my close platonic male friends were Libras. And then sure enough, Kyle's a Libra and it's one of my very well, favorite signs. And I, I, I vibe really well with them. Like on a, on a romantic level, we just sort of like get each other. And then uh, friendship level, uh, Jan, you are supposed to be quite compatible with myself. I'm a Sagittarius, but also with Which Leo's. I, but I am. I'm very compatible with you. Like, yeah, I just, I, I it, it is effortless to like both of you. You guys are effortless oh. <laughs> people. Right back Even when Sarah you. had her yeah. friends here, it's amazing when you really like somebody, generally you like their friends True. because I know you guys make good choices mm -hmm. and I know, you know, a lot of people, but I think both of you women have an inner circle that is really important and really core to your values. Mm -hmm. They're like family to you. And mm -hmm. so I love how you attract people. I think I always worry about people that just are everything to everyone and everyone's their yeah. bestie. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you don't know who you are yet. Yeah. You mm -hmm. don't know who you are yet, but you guys, I would trust you to bring anyone that you cared about and that you trusted to my house. You'd be like, Hmm, I'm going to bring six of my friends to Jan's place. Who am I going to bring? Like mm -hmm. when Sarah was here last summer, I, absolutely adored every single one of the women that came through that door. They were oh funny, respectful, inquisitive, like 
had a real joie de vivre Caitlin for life. Caitlin missed our, like, we did, like, a tarot card reading and ate, like, vegan dip. Like, you would have been right into it. <laughs> <laughs> I just had my, I just had an hour long tarot card reading with the guest, uh, what, what woman can who will be a future. we talk about it before we go? Cause we can. Yeah. She will be a guest on our show. Her name is Tarot Lori, like T-A-R-O and then L-O-R-I. She has a huge following on Instagram. She's done tarot readings for celebrities. She's been doing this for years and she has an Ooh. amazing book coming out soon with Harper Collins called burn your shit. And Ooh. it's about the ritual of burning things at the full moon. And she is, she calls herself woo woo without the cuckoo. Like she's just honestly a very intuitive, uh, intelligent person. Why not and tap into that stuff? Why that's not? That's the thing. I, I, in, in my older age, I was way more cynical about all this stuff when I was younger. And since I started being more open to it, I've seen a lot of positive change in my life and just feeling I don't know, like open to that connection and, and kind of, I, I find it fun. Spirituality and, is fun. Yeah. And I, and, and she and I spoke a little bit. And very before, beneficial. Very beneficial. And before the reading she did for me personally, which I just adored and hit every nail on the head, it was scary. I recorded that I have a, I have, I'm going to post it eventually on social when I edit it. Cause it's a bit long, but I asked her about tarot cards in general and you know, the history of them and, and how it works and I just thought, you know, this is the kind of thing where if, if you treat it as like entertainment and you take from it what you need and you keep it positive and you don't look at this as some all seeing eye that's going to tell you everything. It's more just a quick energy read on things. And, and if you take yeah. it that way, you, there's nothing to dislike. Well, I really look forward to her talking to, to, to what was one of your takeaways that she said like about your future, because right now you, you mentioned earlier, oh, I want to, I'm, I might be going for a, like a job interview. Mm -hmm. I might be, mm -hmm. you know, looking at furthering my career. Did you ask about your career? Can I, this what, whole what did she say? Was, if you want to share it. It was very, everything about the reading was sort of under the umbrella of my career changes because I've just recently been let go from chum and, and she listens to the podcast. So she's probably hearing this. And she also used to listen to the morning show and she is, was very positive. She was very positive about the universe is telling you to bet on yourself right now yes. and that good things will follow. At one point, I personally always struggle with like putting myself out there, like putting myself out there to be in the spotlight. You know, do people want to hear what I have to say? Is this the right path for me? You know, back in another lifetime, I thought I would make documentary films. Like I thought of myself more as being behind the camera, so to speak, versus in, on a microphone or doing that. And so I asked her about that because you can ask a few questions at the end of the general reading. And so she at pulls it and she pulls the card out and she goes, Caitlin, she was like, the cards are just beating you over the head with it today. She was like, you pulled the fricking sun. This is the biggest spotlight in the universe. So if you were asking the question of like, should you step into your own? Should you trust yourself? You 100% should. And yes, she, why not? And she did say, she's like, you get in your own way. Like you're someone who like is clearly in their own head a lot. You second guess yourself and you're afraid of failure. And, but failure is a step on the path to success. You do not succeed without failure. So to say, I don't want to fail is to say, I don't want to succeed because you'll never get there without a bunch of failure. So yeah. it's kind of like a little CBT therapy session in some ways. A lot of what she said, checked out <laughs> with my CBT therapy experiences. And it's really yeah. just validating and pa I found it very validating and positive and just nice. And she I, did all yeah. She said that she's like, you have, um, like people on another, like, like you have family members, like how you say, Jan, like souls always travel in packs. So she's like, you have family members and loved ones who are like, you're like kind of angels in life and they're like rooting for you, but you have to ask for what you want. You have yes. to, she's like, you know, fortune does favor the bold. And if you're constantly always hand wringing and saying, why me? Oh my God, Jan, wait. And we also in our reading, she said, she said to me, the cards are saying, why not you? Why, why not you? Why wouldn't this be you? And I said, Jan's mom always said that. And I well, said, it was why something that, not you. I heard that exact voice. <laughs> and I, I heard, I I'm this. not joking. I heard Jan doing her mom's voice when Lori said, my this to mom me may, of may I, very well have been there. Yes. Right. You. I was like yeah. touched. My mom would have loved you guys. She would have just thought, how great to have those two along with you. That's so <laughs> Don't make great. Me cry. <laughs> No, my I'm mom would have, she would have been, stopped. and that's just, you know, on a positive note, remember my mother, 
You have to ask for things. Mm -hmm. Woman goes to heaven. Angel takes her down hallway. They go into a big room. It's filled with beautiful, shiny boxes, like a where, like Costco times a million. And the the woman says to her, what to the angel, what, what is this room? These are all the things you didn't ask for. See, what a good, that was one of my favorite stories for my grandmother. Oh, I love Mm. that. I, love I know that. it's so funny. I, I feel like a lot of parallels in what you're going through now that I went through like two years ago when I left my job because okay. there's the constant asking, am I good enough? Can mm-hmm. I actually do this? Should I be in the spotlight? Should I be doing this? And all I can say is like two years ahead on the path you're just starting, mm-hmm. you will surprise the hell out of yourself. Yeah. I, be- I feel And look at I how these things that. have happened for us. Oh, I know. Look at how. Yeah. Like we, we just, wild. we just sorted out new artwork for yeah. our, our show. You yeah. know, we just saw it. So go we, we, we want something thumbnail. new for us and going forward. Yeah. And, you know, we're figuring out a lot of stuff and it's going to take some time, but you know, it's, uh, I, I agree with, with what Sarah's saying, Caitlin is just that you're going to surprise yourself. Mm-hmm. And the only person yeah. in your way is you and your son shit. That's it. <laughs> Me and my little Pucano. Yeah, Aww. Pucano. God love like, him. Like I don't. Yeah. I'm telling you though, Jan. When, when she when she said that, and then I told her that your mom always said that. She's she said, and I have a. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna isolate this clip. I she got said I've. She, that's what she I said. Know. She said, I have goosebumps right now. And she was like, I, and she said like so many times during a reading, she said, I got goosebumps again. She goes, Caitlin, I'm covered in sweat. She was like pulling sweat off of her <laughs> because she said like, I'm getting stuff for you. Like you are supposed to be, this is the best thing that's ever happened to you. You are on the right path. You are about to see financial success, personal success, growth, gain, all this stuff is coming your way. But she's like, the way that you get it is you have to push, you have to push the hell out of yourself and you have to ask for the things you want and don't settle for the things you don't want and don't let anyone throw you off on your path. And I was like, okay, this is just like you, everyone could use that advice in life. Oh, for yeah. sure. When yeah. people are not, I, I used to always say when I was, you know, in the middle of the craziness of my, my career, my music career, and maybe I'm still in the middle. I feel like I'm still in the middle. <laughs> mm-hmm. But back in like the 90s, early 2000s, I remember saying in an interview one day, and I surprised myself because I was just starting to change. I'm not going to I'm not gonna let you manipulate me and doubt me and say yeah. weird shit about me in this interview. And I just said, listen, if you're not beside me, get out of my way. Yep. That's right? how I feel. If you're not That's beside the- me and if you're not going to help me, get out of my way because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. You're an and, Aries. You're the first sign of the Zodiac and you will barrel through anything. And that well, is true. It's head through the wall. <laughs> then you wonder why, Oh God, I'm stuck. And someone's <laughs> actually poking my bum right now. Someone's poking my dune sphincter and I don't like it. <laughs> my dune sphincter. That just killed me. Oh my That's God. well, I love the, the graphic that Sarah put up on Instagram last week. All of a sudden, we're talking about the popcorn container for the Dune movie, which I am obsessed about now. I, yeah. I can't even get into the Dune movie. We'll do that next time. <laughs> okay. But I did not get the popcorn sphincter container. But folks, if you go to Dune, go get that. They were out. They didn't have any If you any can get left. them, get them. You can sell them. Like, the well, I asked. I actually went to the f- f- goddamn concession. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have the... And I said this to this poor 16 year old boy. I said, do you have the sphincter popcorn thing? The dune sphincter sphincter (laughs) thing? He looked at me like he was going to call HR and have me removed from the, anyway, we'll talk about that later. Listen, these are all good things. And I, I, what a great way to, to end the goosebumpy, but we do have some voice notes that people have left. And as promised, if you're going to leave us a voice note, you might end up on the Jan Arden podcast. Mm -hmm. So we had some really positive things. I'm going to defer to you, Sarah, and you can walk us through the one or two that you're going to play for us now. Okay. Very quickly. I just want to read one comment we got from Corey. I just wanted to say thank you for all the laughter and inspiration you three have provided me on my drive home from work every day. It's never a Jan Arden podcast without Poppy. That's her. I recently saw Jan in Ottawa for her book signing, and I finally have the courage to write the book I've been wanting to write for a decade. I started a few weeks ago, and I can't stop. Thank you for reminding me that no matter where you come from or how old you are, you can still achieve your dreams. I'm manifesting a New York Times bestseller and maybe a movie directed by uh, Reese Witherspoon. Dream big, right? Love you, girls. Have a wonderful day. That's such a nice message. I love that. It's pretty cool. uh, 
That's yeah, so cool. we'll we'll play um, a couple of voice notes here that you know everyone's really uh, mentioning their name, but like a really cute story uh, from Kendra about her grandfather being involved in one of your music videos, and then um, a few to follow here. We'll put them in here. Okay, <laughs> okay, so we can wrap up. However. Well, thank you very much for those very heartfelt messages. We appreciate it so much. I'm going to leave us a voice note. I'm going to go into the website <laughs> and I'm going to leave us a voice note, and hopefully you I'll make get it onto the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thanks uh, for listening. You can subscribe to the Jan Arden podcast. We look for our new artwork. And um, yeah, if you hit subscribe, we're going to show up in your in your mailbox and you won't have to go searching for us. Tell your friends about us. Give us a review. That helps people find us. And um, yeah, thanks for all the people that are sponsoring us. We really appreciate it so very much. And um, and And the people who are cheering us on, we know who you are. And we're still, I'm telling you, Russ Richards, we're coming for oh. you. And we still want you to do a segment. And But we don't want to, like, put you through any, like, panic or we don't want you to worry or anything. And you don't even have to be on video. We can just do audio. We can just, you don't have to have your camera on, but we just want to say hi. Whatever you want to do. You don't even have and, to shower. And you can just, or you can I don't start shower. with a voice, or you can start with a voice note. I'm yeah. covered in baby poo. Like, do whatever oh, you want. God. I just. <laughs> Guys. We have a we have a big week next week, which we sh- so we could do this. No, two I want to we- I want to pre-sell this. Do you know who we- who's our guest? Who wants to announce it? No, I was going to say, do we wait for an announcement on socials and tell people to wait for an announcement on socials this no. week, or do you want to drop it I right here we, right now? I think we just jump in it. Who, Caitlin? You do it. Caitlin needs to do this. Go. Next week we're going to talk to Chelsea Handler. Chelsea oh, fucking shit. Handler. <laughs> for fuck's sakes. <laughs> I can swear because I'm not on radio anymore. Hello, oh my vodka. god, it's me, Chelsea! Like all her books, where do we even the, start? That you know, her birthday just, ski video where she's wearing her dog as a backpack <laughs> and smoking a joint in the in a bikini. I'm Icon. like Chelsea lately. Oh, everything. So uh, she's our guest next week, next Friday. The, I don't the even know how we manage. Chelsea. Just as a bit of a backstory, I went to her her stand up show like a few weeks ago. And because I knew somebody that knows Carla, thank you, Carla, for you probably had something to do with organizing this. <laughs> I know I got to go backstage and it's the second time that I've met Chelsea. She's so nice. I don't even know what to tell you. She's just nice. She's like, hey, Jan, oh my God, I thought you were going to have me on your podcast. And I'm thinking, did I mention that the last time? <laughs> Maybe I did. And she's like, yeah, what's happening with that? I'm like, I I will get this ball in motion. I will throw it into your yard and we'll see what happens. (laughs) And sure enough, this is probably the busiest woman on the planet. Um, She's like, yeah, we'll do it. So we're, we're pretty stoked and uh, I cannot wait. We have, and you guys better put some questions together. I've got my my list. There's no way I'm going to get through them, but I want us to each have a couple questions. So anyways, Chelsea Handler. And if you have a, a question for Chelsea, um, send us a note before next week, um, as early as you can, so that we could try to include it, and mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, right away, I'm just going to say, what was 50 Cent like in bed? I think that's same. a great way to start <laughs> that, the interview. I love that you had the same question as me. So yeah. <laughs> I, We're kidding, but we're not kidding. Uh, anyway, yeah. this is Jan Arden Podcast. Thanks for listening. Thoughtful, soft thoughtfulness. Yeah, I think that's a great way to end it. And I can't wait to hear more about our tarot reader. We got to get her yeah. on here too. Yeah, oh my we God, we In, got so many around her book Around her book launch. And title of app is, is Soft Thoughtfulness. Okay, okay. title of episode, Soft Thoughtfulness. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time, folks. Toodly-doo.